Never does life feel more fragile than when things have not gone according to plan. Last week, my family was visiting, and my grandfather reminded me of the story of how he and his father built their first family home. He was all of 14 years old, and they had just moved from Washington State back to the family plot in DeSoto, Missouri. And it was just an empty plot, and they didn't have any money for a house. So one day, my grandfather's father, Grandpa Paul, Grandpa Paul sees an ad in the local paper. They were looking for someone to come and help demolish a house. And so Grandpa Paul had an idea, and he grabbed his wife and his son, and he took them down to where this house was in St. Louis, and they volunteered to demolition the house, to demolish it. And Grandpa Paul said to his wife and his son, we are going to take this house apart bit by bit. We are going to save all the pieces, and we're going to rebuild it just as it is on the plot in DeSoto. And that's exactly what they did. My grandfather remembers wandering around with a coffee can, being in charge of pulling out every single nail of every single piece of wood, saving it in the coffee can, and then making sure that all the materials got stacked together on various trips on the back of the truck so that each room of the house was with all the other materials for that room of the house and they relocated the entire thing and rebuilt it on the plot in DeSoto. And my grandfather remembers standing with his father in front of this house, admiring the work that they had done. And my grandfather sees this beautiful sun porch staring out into the east. And he was thinking about all the sunrises that he and his family would enjoy sitting on this porch. And something occurred to him and he said, Dad, this looks great. I don't remember there being a sun porch. And Grandpa Paul didn't answer right away, just stared at the house a few moments longer and eventually said very quietly, it was supposed to be a living room. <laughs> and the two looked at each other and before they could say much more, Grandma Paul was coming up the driveway and Grandpa turned around and said, sweetie, look, I built you that sun porch you've always wanted. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I'm not usually that quick or that flexible when my best laid plans come apart at the seams. When my expectations are dashed, when my greatest hopes never materialize, when life has been so rough that I feel utterly out of place in the world. In those times, I find it difficult to be satisfied with what I have. In those moments, everything feels very uncertain, very tenuous, fragile. And in those moments, it's hard to imagine ever feeling at home again. Israel had been conquered by the Babylonian Empire, and all the elites of Israel were driven out of their homes and forced to live in the court of King Nebuchadnezzar, near what we know today as Iraq. God had promised, you will be my people, and I will be your God. God promised them a home in the land of milk and honey. But now the temple had been destroyed, their land conquered, and the wealthiest of the wealthy, the most elite in the nation, had been cast out, living in a foreign land. In a short time, an entire people had gone from the certainty that life was good and their God would protect them from all harm to the experience of everything they had ever worked for 
shattered. What could anyone do in this situation? When everything they knew had fallen apart, what were they supposed to do next? Well, the prophet Jeremiah sent them a letter. And it's almost impossible for us to imagine what this must have been like. Imagine that not only are you far from home, you have no home. You are a stranger in your own skin. You're surrounded by a nation of people who you don't know, and you, never, you have no idea what's going to happen tomorrow. And you're standing there in the midst of this place that is so uncertain and unfamiliar, and all of a sudden you just hear, Telegram! For you! Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, to you, the displaced, my people far from home, build houses and live in them. Plant gardens and eat what they produce. Seek the welfare of the city where I have sent you into exile and pray to the Lord on its behalf, for in its welfare you will find your welfare. For surely I know the plans I have for you, plans for your welfare and not your harm, to give you a future with hope. When you search for me, you will find me, and I will bring you back to the place from which I sent you. None of us have experienced the devastation of being exiled from our homelands, but each and every one of us has experienced displacement. When a loved one dies, everything changes. And life doesn't feel like it once did. When friends move away, an era of our life comes to an end. And we become uncertain about what might happen next. We lose our jobs, or we get new ones, or we retire. And with each of these changes, we find ourselves somewhat out of place, not entirely sure what to do with ourselves or what to expect next. This church has seen many changes in the recent years. People who used to be here every week without fail have not been seen in some time. New faces have popped up. Some of our treasured longtime members of this community are no longer around to participate and help with all the traditional events and rituals of the church. Many longtime members are still here and still among us, and we are in new phases of life that limit what we're able to do. You have a new pastor. And even if you like some things about him, he's not the same as before. It's very different. And we may not be sure how we feel about that difference yet. Friends, we are continually displaced. Life never meets our expectations, and the way our paths unfold is almost always unexpected. When enough change happens at once, we may not experience exile, but we certainly don't feel at home. These are fragile moments. These are moments when we feel we are standing on the brink and the slightest wind might just topple us right over. What does our God call us to do in those moments? Live there. Plant there. Wherever you are on your journey, however undesirable or unexpected it might be, 
Trust that God has sent you there. And God needs you to live there for a time. Because you have been blessed. You reveal to the world the glory of the God who created it. In your everyday actions, in your ordinary lives, you demonstrate a unique and extraordinary aspect of our God. And there are people around you who need to be able to see that. You are not fragile. You need not long for the past. You need not despair for the future. However displaced we may feel, our God plans for our welfare, not our harm. We are resilient, specifically because wherever we go, our God goes with us. So friends, let us confess together on this Stewardship Sunday that life is not what we expected it to be. And let us also hear the good news. God has brought us to this unexpected place together. When we feel displaced from life as we knew it, we can rely on one another to discover God in our midst. And God promises to lead us back home together. God has led you to this place at this time. Build your house here. Plant your garden here. Live your life together here as the people of God for all of God's people. Amen.